We're all looking at the same thing. Thank you for joining us for another perspective from the Sag Nasty If Anybody Asked Me podcast. Don't forget to hit that like button and leave a comment. For more videos, please subscribe to the channel. And I'm going, this guy is coming up with the state of Michigan, recruiting one of the top athletes in the state of Michigan, plus in the while you have Nick Saban at Michigan State at the point, and Lloyd Carr, who won a national championship, and that's his first recruiting line to me, and I'm like, dude, this guy is. Hard calling him and telling him I wasn't gonna go because I was sad, kind of you, and that's why it always bothered me when these guys at the All American games and they put one hat on and then they they're like, oh, because they'll have like their hats at the yeah, yeah, yeah. game and they'll you know five hats and they'll take a Tennessee hat and go. And then uh... put like a, and I'm thinking. These men spend hours and hours and hours recruiting. I mean, mm-hmm. the good ones, like the one, like they're around you more than their families. And their, their profession is bloodline is recruiting, right? And when he took a golf cart with a guy that he might not ever see again. That's, that's, that, that's the thing. And, and, and I'm looking at all the time, Bobby, what, not, but Bobby Williams was my recruiting coordinator. Like he was up and visiting, coming to Bass. And I'm thinking at the time, like, oh, this guy's talking. But I'm like, here's a man. You're thinking for 35 minutes, he's sitting here talking to a high school kid about probably some dumb shit. And I'm thinking like, not realizing like his schedule and how busy he is and what he could be doing. And to think of that man sitting there going, oh, fuck, I can't plead. And then put like, oh, yes. And then, like it'd be devastating. Like mm-hmm. you motherfucker. Like yeah. you cock, son of you piece of shit. Yeah, I, I'd be so fucking pissed. But Joe Tiller and Brock Brock Spack came in and they had a game plan for me. Um, when I went down to Purdue, I, and the only people I talked to was Joe Tiller, the head coach, John, Jim Cheney, the offensive coordinator, and Brock Spack, the defensive coordinator. And they sat us down. Um, and at that time, I thought I wanted to be an engineer, right? Okay. Uh, that was one question. They, they, they sat us down. At, we went to a, uh, and I actually have, which is cool, Daryl. I actually have, not only from Purdue, but I have my recruiting letters. Oh, wow. I feel like, like I have mine too. <laughs> like, so I wanted to read one, but it, it says, after I won the state championship that next Sunday, yeah. we drove down to a Purdue camp and yeah. Brock Spack says, we're so happy to have you come down. Well, during that camp, right. It was just me, my dad, you know, Drew Brees is there and you know, all this stuff. And uh, they, they called me up into the, like the football offices and they have like this old, like, you know, big box TV. And they said, sit down, Stu. And we're like, okay. I said, this is what we see, because I didn't know what I wanted to do position-wise and whatnot, right? So you're talking about you want someone with – because I don't know what the fuck's going on. So you want someone with direction. You don't. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Right? So we sit down. And, again, I always tell kids when they're getting recruited, you know the importance of the university by who you're actually talking to. Mm. If, if, if it's some – you know, if it's some GA that's making the contact with you, they don't give a fuck. They'd like to have you, but whatever. Mm-hmm. I never saw anybody but Joe Tiller, the head coach, Brock Spack, the defense coordinator, and Jim Cheney. I didn't know anyone else. Mm-hmm. That was the only people I was talking with. Right, right. So that shows you they're – I mean, these guys are fucking busy. You don't realize it when you're going through these yeah. guys. Fucking busy, man. Mm-hmm. Sat me down, and Stu, and they said, play it. And they had five plays on defense – five plays on offense and five plays on special team who said, this is what we see you doing on defense. This is what we see you doing on offense. This is what we see you doing on special teams. And we're like, Oh shit. Like. They that just got made real. 
real and we're like yes oh. we're like that's awesome i can see it like i'm like yeah oh, like, that's real okay mm -hmm. right like they had a game plan for me right? exactly and when i went down there they, there was a feel to it it was just i felt like that was the place for me and then i remember other schools caught wind and they started saying the same things and i'm going well you didn't come up with this mm. you know what i'm saying like this was they came up with this and that goes a long way with me for them to mm -hmm. take the time and say hey what do we see you doing mm -hmm. and there's that i actually have my my uh where tiller offers me a scholarship but i actually have a handwritten letter from joe tiller um that i have a picture of I don't know if I have it here, but he says, he says, hey, we're, we're, we're heading down to the Outback Bowl to play Georgia. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a great year. We got a lot of things going, but he goes, with you here, we're going to win the Big Ten and go to the Rose Bowl. Yes. That, yeah. That was fucking, I, I read that. I'm like, oh, <laughs> shit, man. That's so, so like. I mean, I, I mean, you gotta think. Look at, it. I mean, letter after letter, Gerald, of hand fucking written. You know what I mean? And you're thinking these are these are grown men that are professionals in their own right, sitting here writing hand letters. To like the time that goes into it is just it's unbelievable. So I still have a great relationship with all those coaches. God bless, uh, or God rest Joe Tiller's soul. I'm so mm -hmm. I'm I was a. Um, I was a honorary Paul Bear at his, his funeral. I got the chance to oh, speak wow. at his funeral. Um, I owe that man a lot. And that yeah. guy, that guy never, it was about what he, what type of man he can make us. Number one, he said, if your parent, if he said, I'm going to make this, I'm going to make this guarantee to you guys, uh, to you parents. If you have your first son commits to Purdue, I will commit to you that I will do everything to make sure they graduate. And if they don't, it's because they didn't try. Because his graduation rate from football players was like 98% of the football team graduated. It was, I think the, the normal student was like 89 or 85, but lower, some schools yeah. like yeah. Miami or Florida State, it's like five, five percent. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And whenever I talked to him afterwards, he never asked about NFL was, how's the family? How are you doing? It was always about life, not Anything to do with That's football. That's so crazy. I've heard that about uh, John Wooden. I've heard that about um, my you know uh, coach. Do you, know where John, do you know where John Wooden's from, Yeah, right. right. That's, that's kind of funny. And Coach K, they say the same exact thing, that they don't talk about sports. They talk about life. They always make sure to, to maintain that human relationship with you. Uh, I'm not trying to jump ahead, but I had a very serious question about that. Do you meet another Joe Tiller ever again for the rest of your life? So I have a picture of when Joe Tiller did his home visit, sitting right in, in uh, the remember you walk in my house and there was kind of a little sitting area to the left, mm -hmm. you know, a little just yep. shitty couch and yeah, shit, you know, small, all that yeah. stuff. Yeah, and I remember um, Brock Stack and Joe Tiller coming into the into the house because again, the, the head coach only gets I think like maybe 20 home visits during that time. So it's like a, you know, if you're getting a home visit, dude, again, that's showing you fucking they want you, right? And, I mean, again, this is the guy that found Drew Brees. Like, come on, dude. Like, fuck. <laughs> Before Joe Tiller, there was not, I mean, Purdue hadn't won since the 60s. I mean, it was just like, it's, it's amazing pre-Tiller and post. But anyways, Brock Spacks, you know, he's coming in, he's got all the, you know, my mom and, you know, is talking about academics and, you know. That's a guy who looks like you, right? There's one of those guys uh, looks like you. He's got the mustache. Yeah, that's him. Yeah, he reminds me of he's a swagger. He's, yeah. he's the head coach of Illinois State, most oh. winningest coach in Illinois State uh, football history. Okay. Should have been the head coach after Tiller left, but he didn't. But anyways, mm -hmm. um, Purdue grad, played at mm -hmm. Purdue. His wife's from Lafayette, so great, great family. Um, and that was the other thing, Purdue's. Purdue's campus, it's like literally like an old school campus. It's not mm -hmm. spread out through a city. Mm -hmm. Like the people of the city like have their Purdue flags and like 
normal people who graduated from Purdue live here and go to the soccer games and go to the baseball games. And like, it's a big deal. Like there's a lot of pride and I didn't realize that till I came back. But anyways, so Brock's back's talking to my mom about, you know, academics and this and that. And Joe Tiller's just sitting there like going, staring at me. <laughs> and, he, and he looks like the Quaker Oats man. Right? Yeah, like he, yeah, yeah, he's, yeah. Very he's just going. And I'm like, I'm like, coach, what's up? He goes, Stu, he goes, you got a big nose. I'm like, big, he said, Stu, you got a big nose. I'm like, yeah, I know. He goes, how's that nose fit in that helmet, man? That's a big nose. Oh, and I'm like, <laughs> and I'm going, this guy is coming up to the state of Michigan, recruiting one of the top athletes in the state of Michigan, plus in the country, while you have Nick Saban at Michigan State at this point and Lloyd Carter, who won a national championship, and that's his first recruiting line to me. And I'm like, dude, this guy is – I love it, man. Now, yeah. like, this is freaking – like, it was just so personable. It wasn't Am that I wrong? But he reminds me of Gorse Lines. And the Gorse Lines lineage, like, they almost seems like he could be a uncle or a cousin or, like, something. Oh, it was, like he was always just – he seems like, like family like, in that way. Yeah. And mm -hmm. that's what it felt like. It yeah. felt like that we were a family. Like, I mean, like everyone was just, you go down and hooting and hollering and just having a good time where everyone else just seemed, you know, stuffy and just so like what you would think that yeah. next level would be very serious and just yeah. very football. It's just football and it's just, and we're going to just like, ah, oh, God, this seems like a fucking, like, you know, just like work type of thing. You know what I mean? Where <laughs> You're still young. Just, like people were having fun, you know You're what I'm eight, saying? 17, like, 18, 19 years old. You're still young oh, too. Oh yeah. I mean, it was, it was, um, they were, they, I mean, again, you got to think Brock's back again. I have a lot of respect for him because he'd come up and He'd have to go with my dad over to Meinberg's, and he's like, Dude, <laughs> I knew coming up to visit you that I was going to have to bring Rolaids and aspirin and some Alka-Seltzer because it was going to be a long night with your dad. Wow. And um, he, you got to think, man, that, that guy, the balls for him to come up and think Purdue, like, what the fuck? I knew Glenn Robinson was from Purdue. The first Purdue football game I think I saw was in, with Mark Betcher, I went over to Marty Matern's trailer, and it was when Purdue played Oklahoma State, and it was my first time seeing Purdue on TV. Other than that, all I knew was Purdue basketball, right? Mm -hmm. Glenn Robinson. Yeah. Glenn Robinson.